let's take a look at the code for the binary search tree. We're making it generic so that we can have any sorts of keys and values that we want. The keys definitely have to be comparable in order to find where things belong in the tree. It's not entirely necessary that the values be comparable, but it's a nice thing to have. We're also going to implement iterable so that we can use an enhanced for loop that goes through the contents of the binary search tree in ascending order. The properties for a binary search tree are the root, which is a node in the tree, and the size. And here's how we initialize a tree. And the size method returns the size property. Again, I don't like the idea of having a property and a method name the same. There are certain languages where you can't do it, but Java does let you get away with it. We'll talk about the iterator later. Let's look at this tree node. And here's the class tree node. Now you'll notice it's indented. It's not in a separate class from the binary search tree. In Java, you can have classes nested within other classes. And the advantage of doing this is the, the K and V, our generic types, will be available without us having to specify them every single time. I did try separating them out, having the tree node class be separate from the binary search tree, and I found myself putting in the k, comma, v in angle brackets everywhere. So by making a nested class, I avoid a lot of busy work. So what does each node of the key of the tree have? Excuse me. It's going to have a key and a corresponding value. We're going to have a left child and a right child, and to make things easier, we're going to have a reference to the parent node. When we did the parse tree, we used a stack to remember where we had been and to get back to the parent. That would be a little bit tricky, and it would get really, really ugly in binary search trees. It's a lot easier for us to keep a reference to the parent so that we have immediate access to it. And here we have three constructors. They're overloaded. I can initialize a tree with just a key and value, or the key, value, and parent, or I can go all the way with the key, the value, left, right, and parent all specified. You'll notice that for the first two of these, I'm calling this, which is a call to the five argument constructor with these parameters using null where appropriate. Some of the things I need to be able to know about the tree nodes is, is this a left child? Well, it has to have a parent to be a child, and that parent's left child has to be the node I'm looking at. Similarly for, is this a right child? I need to know if this is the root node. I can find that out by asking if there's a parent. The root is the only node in a tree that has no parent node. If it's a leaf, then there are no left or right children. Sometimes I'll need to know if there are any children at all, either a right or a left or both. I just need to know there's at least one child. And I also will need to know at some point, does this node have children? Does it have both a left and a right? So those are the main things I'm going to need to be able to do with a node. I also have this one, replacing the value, where I can replace all of the items inside of a node, and that may require some adjustments to a parent. Then I have my getters and setters. And I have a two string, which will return all the information that I need to know about the tree node. The rest of these I'll get to later. So that's what we have here. Now the question is, how do I insert something into a tree? 
I want to put something into this tree that has a certain key with an associated value. If there is a root to the tree, if the tree has something in it already, then I'm going to call this helper method, which will say, here's the key and value, and put it into this subtree, the subtree being the entire tree in this case. If the root is null, which means that I don't have a, anything in the tree yet, I'll create a new tree node, and that will become my root. And then I'll increase the size by 1. Now, let's go back to this case where there's already something in the tree, and I want to put something in at the root. The first thing I do is ask, OK, relative to my current node, is it less than the current node? If it is, that means it's going to have to go into the left side of the tree. If there's already something in the left side of the tree, then I'm going to look for I can put the key and value into that left subtree. If there is no left child already, cool. My new tree node becomes the current node. It's left child. Now, if the key dot compare to comes out to zero or a positive number, I'm sorry. Let me back up here. So if I get a um, zero or negative, so if it's equal or less than, I go and in, go into the left tree. Otherwise, it must be greater, and that means I have to ask. Okay, it has to go into the right subtree. Is there a right subtree already? If there is, I'll put the key and value into that subtree on the right. If there's nothing to the right of the current node already, that's the else, then it's going to get a right child. It'll be the new tree node. And that is about where I stopped during the lecture. And we're going to pick up with um, some of the other things here, namely how to get things. Oh yeah, there was one other thing that I did want to look at here before I go on. We have a two string. And I've got a helper method called stringify. And I give it the starting point. I give it a result here. If the node is not equal to null, then check to see if it's a leaf node. If it's a leaf node, I put a square bracket, the key, and a closing square bracket. Otherwise, it must be a subtree, and that means I'm going to give a square bracket, the key, and then the left child and the right child inside of square brackets. If the node is null, I'll return empty square brackets. And this is recursive, and I'll eventually return that result, which gets returned from two string. So now we know how to insert something into the tree, and we know how to um, convert the tree to a string. And here I had a binary search tree that I created, and my keys are the country names, my values are the capitals, and I was just testing to see that my get works properly. We haven't talked about that yet. And what I'm going to do here, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's do a system dot out dot print line of tree. So we can see that our two string method works. And let's comment out all this other stuff here. We'll put it back in later as we need it. And there, let me scroll this guy here so we can see it a little better. France was the first key. To its left is Albania, because Albania is less than France. Japan is greater than France, so it's in the right subtree. And the right subtree, which begins with Japan, has Germany on the left and Madagascar and its friends on the right. This is the list of lists format that we can't do with heterogeneous data, but we can certainly use it for output. And that's the end of the lecture for today.